welcome, welcome. Welcome. Anybody over in this section over here? Got, hey, come on. Welcome. Awesome. So uh, in your bulletins, there's a connection card. Find that connection card. Fill that out after the service. You'll take it back to the Welcome Center right back here. Just past this clock right here, there's a Welcome Center right over there. We have a gift for you guys. We just want to thank you for coming out and checking us out. We hope you're blessed today, and so we're really glad you're here. Um, also, you guys can fill out your connection cards and, uh, and just share some of the praises and the prayer requests that God's doing in your life. Um, maybe you want him to move in a certain way. Feel free to pass that along um, in the basket in the back. So we definitely want to hear from you guys. So, um, Also, we have uh, clipboards. Feel free to pass those along. That's just a way for us to, to know uh, you're here. And if you're not here, just for us to reach out and say, hey. So we are really blessed today because we get to celebrate some youngsters graduating. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yep. So we have, uh, we have an awesome uh, children's program here, and they prepared a video as we uh, prepare for graduation. Would you roll that, Gene? Come on, come on. Well, we, uh, we want to welcome uh, Miss Joy and, and the kiddos that we are seeing go to the next level, and we're going to do that right now. Would you guys welcome Miss Joy, Miss Heather, and the kiddos? I, I, had, I had this music queued up, and then it didn't work, so we're just going to do it right now, a cappella. Dun 
pam 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 Yep, come on. Welcome everybody. Welcome to your graduation, guys. You so excited? So who do we got graduating today? Are there any fifth graders in the room? Any other fifth graders? No? Anybody? No? So I'm Shalann, and I am one of the ministry leads for the elementary room. I have Chelsea with me here today. And Miss Joy and Miss Heather's class. Yes, I have put that video together for you. And I was lucky enough to have all the kindergartners that were graduating in my class this morning. It was amazing. So I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but the fifth graders are graduating to youth group. And we have Jaden and Rachel and Eric and Vika. And we have a gift for you guys here today. And we have some certificates. We're having technical difficulties. Okay, we have invisible certificates. They are amazing, and they have their names on them. Vika, this is for you. You guys have grown so much, and so much maturity in Jesus. And he's calling you into your purpose and your identity. You're welcome. And they're so polite. Down. <laughs> and we're going to pray for them right now. I'm just going to lead us all in prayer for these graduates that are moving on to youth group and for all of our kids. If there's any other kids that want to run up here and be blessed and prayed for, we would love to have you up here if you're part of the elementary program. Um, and so just pray along with me. If there's anything that's on your heart for these kids here, just pray it out to the Lord. Um, Father, we just praise you and thank you for Vika, Rachel, Eric, and Jaden and everything you have placed in their hearts and the destiny that's in their lives and your original intent for them. We call it forth in Jesus' name. We thank you that they are gems in your crown, that they are warriors, Lord, that they have the full armor of God. They will take their stand against the devil's schemes. They will be filled with all the fullness of God, that they will know your love, Jesus. I pray that they would go out as youth into their, Lord, into wherever they have influence, Lord, to their teachers and their friends and their families, and they will show your love, God, and they would heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. They would be powerful. So we just thank you, and we love them, and we're so grateful that you have put them in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Great job, guys. And they got the Bible in 366 days, the youth edition, because you guys are going into the youth group. So come on, let's make some noise for them. And so parents, if you guys want to go ahead and join the kids uh, down to the children's program, uh, just to sign them in, uh, we just bless the kids right now. So bless you guys. Come on. And also, we have, uh, we have clipboards that we're, we're going to pass out to you guys uh, just to give you an opportunity. If you are just compelled and excited about the youth and, and the kids program, uh, you can go ahead and sign up to volunteer, and we'll do some follow-up with you. So those clipboards are moving along right now, so feel free to uh, just fill your information out if you're interested in participating with that. Also, you guys might have noticed there's a feast outside. Come on, there's Belize hot dogs. Hot dogs shipped in from Belize. Well, well, okay, not really. Um, they're probably from Costco, but they're good. And all of the proceeds go to send the teams from the youth, and, uh, and that's out there in June uh, to Belize. So we just encourage you guys, right after service, buy five hot dogs and, uh, you know, 
give them to someone. So, yeah, just encourage you guys to do that. So, so excited. Uh, we have a testimony that we want to celebrate. Is Melanie Antonucci here? Are you here, Melanie? Yes, there she is. Come on. Would you guys welcome Melanie Antonucci? She's got a testimony she wants to share with us. Yep. So good. Melanie is a gifted worshiper. You guys may know uh, her from some of her worship she does at Live Soaking. So definitely blessed to have you and your husband here. I'm really nervous because I can sing in front of people but not talk. (laughs) So anyway, (laughs) Um, I also was praying about what to share. Um, And I really felt like God was impressing on my heart to be a little bit more vulnerable today. So... (laughs) Ah! (laughs) So... um, I don't know, maybe a lot of you don't know me and my husband, Steve. We've been married for two years on the 6th of June. And um, I really felt like God brought us together. Um, It was like a, um, what do you call it, an arranged marriage? (laughs) And... um, Uh, all of you married folks out there know the struggles that happens. And I think it's not really talked about. I think it's really like cliche or I don't know. It's just not proper etiquette to really talk about the deep, deep issues (laughs) that you deal with with um, marriage. But uh, we had some pretty horrendous fights in the beginning. And... um, It pretty much seemed like uh, there wasn't any hope. Um, I kept on, you know, believing God that, uh, you know, what he was saying was true about us being brought together. And that's all I had to stand on was faith because there was no evidence in our relationship. It really didn't seem like I even liked him or loved him. Um, in my heart, I knew that I wanted to, but I didn't know how to. And so um, uh, um, I was becoming very isolated. I didn't have um, very many friends. Uh, uh, it just was impossible because of the type of relationship that we had. Anytime we were around people, there would always be an explosion of uh, fighting. And, um, and it was really embarrassing and it was really scary. Uh, but that was also right around the same time that the revival started here. Um, we started going to soaking meetings, uh, seeking God. We needed help, um, for our relationship and we just needed help at a really deep heart level. And, um, there, (laughs) again, there was no evidence that things were going to change, but, um, I can tell you that over the last two years that we've been married, it is a complete turnaround, like 110% better. Um, (laughs) Jesus just totally invaded. I mean, my husband's a different person. I'm a different person. I mean, we still, don't get me wrong, we still have fights and stuff like that, but it's nothing like it was. um, I mean, we even gotten to the the point, I mean, our lowest low, it, it had even gotten, you know, to the point where it was physical. And I'm not putting my husband on blast and putting myself on blast because it was me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, we don't have to worry about that kind of toxicity in our relationship anymore because Jesus completely eradicated it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not letting you get away that easily. <laughs> Come on. How many of you guys know that, that Jesus steps in and he doesn't want us to get cleaned up, so to speak, before he steps in and does something, right? Come on. And I just want to honor uh, the vulnerability um, that, that you just displayed to all of us by stepping up here and sharing from that place of honesty. Because how many of you guys know that God honestly engages us 
and changes us from that place into where we are to go. And it's, and it's beautiful, the process, but he steps into it with us. Come on. And so, so much courage, so much uh, breakthrough, and we are just so blessed to have you and Steve here as a part of our church. So we just honor you. Steve, can you come on up? Come on, bring Samuel. Come on. And you guys are expecting as well? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Oh, now, <laughs> in case. <laughs> yep, come on. Yeah, that's so good. I just felt like we were supposed to um, actually bless these guys this yeah. morning. Um, so can we stand um, as a prophetic drama saying that we're standing with them as, as a family and, um, and that they are standing for every marriage here that's struggling but hasn't had the courage to, like, cry out for help yet. And um, the, uh, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And, um, and, 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 and there is this prophetic thing in the air right now. And basically it's this, that your marriage is going to make it, um, that God did bring you together. Yeah, you're radically opposite. That was the point. Um, it wasn't arranged for your happiness as much as it was for your holiness. Um, but happiness is coming. Joy is coming in the morning. And so I, I, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to honor you. Um, because, uh, uh, because the Lord loves you, and we are so proud of you. So, Father, thank you for this couple that you brought together. Yes, we bless them. Steve, you're an awesome man of God. You're yes. an awesome son in this house. Mm-hmm. And, Father, we just thank you for this awesome man that, having done all, he's continued to stand. Yeah. And we bless him in strength. We bless you, Melanie. We bless you as an awesome mm-hmm. woman of God, as a daughter in this house. Mm-hmm. We declare you are loved here. You are accepted here. We declare that God has called you. Yeah, yeah, God has called you not just to declare the gospel, but to live the gospel. And I just see that, that there's going to be a wonderful balance between um, living and declaring and singing, Melanie. And that, um, and that you never have to feel like you're like, you know, like saying one thing and living another. Because it's by grace that you've been saved. It's by His kindness that you've been brought in. And so I just declare the Father's kindness over you. And I just see Him like, like I... I hope this isn't like blasphemous, but I just see that like God almost like grandpa, like grandpa God, and that your that that um, that your children are going to know God almost like it's going to be that it's going to be like that close that God is going to be such a part of your family. He's going to be like grandpa, and I don't know if I don't know if you guys need a grandpa in your in your home, but I just feel like God, it's, it's like you're going to know God as grandpa, and your kids are going to know God as grandpa, and He's going to bring gifts to your children, and I just see that um. I just bless you guys with that. Yeah. yeah, I bless you guys. And I just declare that, um, that your children will call you blessed. They will say that mom and dad were blessed and that we were raised in a blessed home. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And your children will bless you. Your grandchildren will bless you. Amen. And so I just, yeah. I just declare yeah. honor and blessing yeah. over your family in favor yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Come on. Yeah, we're strong from these moments of family time. Come on. Yeah, we're a family that God's building here. So thank you again, uh, Antonucci's, for, for leading in that. Well, we bless you guys. Yeah, so, um, so come on. We're excited to, to dive even deeper and, uh, and into uh, what God's doing with this Engaging Heaven, Transforming Earth series. It's neat to look around and, and see how he's transforming earth. Amen? You know, to like hear from people's testimonies of God breaking out and through in their life. And so as we dive deeper into the book of Acts, uh, just excited to see what God does. So would you guys welcome Pastor Darren. <laughs> awesome. All right. How you guys doing? You doing good? Yeah? You wouldn't lie, right? I thought so. Awesome. Good. I'm doing well, too. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Just look at the person next to you. The fire of God is in you. I can feel it. If you got your Bibles, let's go. Um, we're in Acts chapter 3 this morning, continuing. Um, this is a continuation. Curtis, if you just go just a tiny bit in here. Uh, it's a continuation of where we left off um, from last Sunday. I want to do two things um, before we dive in. Uh, the first thing is I just want to just talk about um, this last weekend um, here at SRC. Um, man, we've seen such a build uh, in our weekend meetings as far as just the spiritual momentum. Um, uh, with Andre Ashby, uh, brought such a wonderful, genuine 
Um, uh, I mean, uh, it was awesome. And then Samuel Robinson. But something happened last Sunday night in our worship. Our worship just about went about two hours. Then there's something about a, a meeting um, when worship becomes the main thing. And that's, and that's one of the things that we've been actually waiting for really contending for and then that continued again on Friday night you could feel that in the room again uh, last night it's been such an honor to have Bonnie Shavda here uh, this weekend it's just been it's just been an amazing amazing weekend and then last uh, last night you could just feel that that moment it just it's felt like we've been on this this wave just this wonderful wave and and um, it's funny because sometimes, sometimes we don't recognize the waves because they look differently each time they come. But it, it really has been like this real wonderful kind of wave that we've been riding. Um, and last night, uh, the service ended, I don't know, around 1030 or something. Um, but the worship didn't end. And the glory of the Lord just began to thicken and thicken and thicken. And people just remained until around 1140, 1145. It was almost like the Lord just settled in. And people just started responding um, all throughout the room. As you could just feel. I mean, I, didn't, I, I had my eyes shut. I was laying down over here. And it's just like every hair on my body just went out. It's just like the feeling like, wow, the Lord is here. Um, and so uh, uh, we didn't get out. The meeting w- ended at 1030. We probably left right around uh, midnight. Um, so that's kind of crazy to think that just a couple hours ago we were here, you know. Um, I say that just to encourage you that God is moving and also to encourage you to come even tonight um, to be a part of what the Lord is doing because um, it's just so cool. God is just so gracious. So that's the first thing so tonight. Um, uh, if, if you haven't uh, um, um, uh, received the ministry of Bonnie Shavda or Mahesh Shavda, if you haven't really, if you're not familiar with them, um, the best way to, to be familiar isn't to YouTube them, but just to show up tonight um, because they're such a wonder. They are such a gift to the body. Bonnie is such a gift to the body. It's such an honor to have you here this morning. Um, and uh, a little intimidating. And then the other thing that I was going to say is, uh, I'm having fun. She's, she's a friend. The other thing I wanted to mention is, um, for, all, for, all the, for all the men um, in the room, um, I'm going to be with uh, Patricia King's folks this next week, XP Ministries. We're going to be doing a live webinar for the dudes, talking about dude issues that would like to keep us from engaging with our destiny. So that will be on Wednesday night, 6 p.m. It's a free webinar. I'm doing it with Robert Hodgkin. Um, so you can watch that. Um, probably the easiest way to register for that is just to go onto our Facebook page, facebook.com slash um, Seattle Revival Center, and there's a link right there. Um, register, and so I think, I think that's going to be um, really cool. Uh, God's doing some stuff there, and it's just cool to see men on the front lines just starting to, to emerge. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a new thing. I uh, just wanted to, um, to hit on, on that. Okay, um, last Sunday, previously, <laughs> previously, in engaging heaven, transforming earth, Peter and John on their way to the temple, when all of a sudden, they notice the cripple, the cripple who's there every day. Like there's nothing new here, okay? Um, the, they, they, there's a cripple on the way to the temple, and he's known as the cripple. And, um, and they called him the cripple because, well, he had been crippled since birth. So he was kind of famous. Like everybody knew who the cripple was, and he's begging for silver and gold. And Peter and John come, and they're like, silver and gold, have we none? Um, but something we have, we will give, okay? Uh, just to clarify yourself, say, I have something to give. Do you believe that? So say it like you believe it. I have something to give. All right, so that's the truth. Here's the question. Are you willing to give? Come on now. So Peter and John are like, um, what we don't have is money. <laughs> Like, the thing that you're asking for, we don't have. But how many know that sometimes the thing that we think we need is not the thing that we really need? Sometimes the stuff that we're asking for is just that thing that we need in order to survive, to get us into the next day. But how many know that sometimes the Lord wants to provide us with that kind of thing that's not just going to allow us to survive another day, but it's going to position us to thrive. It's going to position us. So, so, um... Anyways, that's, that was last Sunday. Like, so if you're getting into that, go back and watch last Sunday, okay? But, um, so this is what they say. Like, okay, money, don't got that, but what we do have, we'll give to you. And here's what happens. The Lord restores the cripple, okay? Um, we spoke about restoration, God's heart for restoration. And the Lord restores the cripple um, physically, so he, he literally gets up for the first time in his life. He, get, he stands up, and he begins walking 
leaping, praising God. But he wasn't only physically healed because, um, because uh, Peter had taken the time to address who he was as a person. So for the very first time, here's this man of God speaking to him as a person. And he says, look at me. Like he does the Mr. Miyagi. Always look I. Look at me. He treats the man with dignity, addressing his identity. Look at me in my eyes. You're worthy of what's about to take place. And then there's restoration of his spirit as for the first time the cripple gets to go into the temple, into the place of worship. And he begins worshiping and celebrating, not as an outsider any longer, but now as an insider. And he begins throwing down. He, he's like the new worship leader. He's like, it's my first time at church. I don't know how you temple, but I'm about to temple. I'm about to temple here. I belong here. I'm not an Audi. I'm an Annie. Here I am. I'm no longer the cripple. I'm going to need a name. Hey, by the way, I got a name. I'm here. Nice to meet you. And everyone's like, <gasps> freeze. Pause. And that's what brings us to today. Welcome to Sarah Meister. This is going to be fun. All right. You ready to go? Let's go. Verse 11. And while he clung to Peter and John, here's, here's this guy, the healed man, okay, clinging to them. All the people stand, utterly astounded. And they ran together to them, to the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety that we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied into the presence of Pilate and when he decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and you asked for a murderer to be granted to you. You killed the author of life. And God raised him from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith, and his name, he has made this man strong. Whom you see right here in Nya. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health. Someone scream, perfect health. Perfect health. Perfect health. In the presence of you all, verse 17, and now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may, that he may send Christ the appointed for you, Jesus. Verse 21. Whom heaven must receive until the time for the restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Verse 22. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him, whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him, he also proclaimed these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your father, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall be all the families of the earth, and they shall be blessed. God raised up his servant. He sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. The reading of the word. That's where you just go, Jesus. That's a sermon. That's a sermon. And that's the second sermon in the early church. And, and for those of you that were around, we actually looked at the first sermon that Peter preached. Do you remember the first sermon? Now you're like, some of you are like, didn't we already read this? Like, yo, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Pastor Darren, like, I think you're stuck on replay. Like, we studied this sermon. Like, this sermon is so similar to the first sermon that Peter preached in its construct and in its, in its structure. So, yes, great observation, you little observers, you. Like, yeah, it's very, very similar. What's different is the audience, okay? So, this morning we did a 9 a.m. service, and you're at the 11 a.m. 
just for you visitors, this service usually gets out about four in the afternoon. Um, now the difference, I preach the same sermon, okay? In this, ser- I'm kidding, just hang in there, all right? I preach the same sermon at 9 a.m. that I am at the 11 a.m. And that, for all, for all y'all carryovers, like, you'll know this to be true, that oftentimes, even though we're bringing the same sermon, it's two radically different sermons because of the people that are gathered. Now, the difference between the very first sermon that Peter brought and this sermon was that the first sermon was to the mockers. So remember um, on Pentecost Sunday, right, when the Holy Spirit came in the upper room, right, it came as a fire. So the Holy Spirit comes as a fire, 120 uh, people in the upper room, comes down, divides 120 ways, comes up and in, and immediately the people of God just, Ooh, tongues, right, the gift of tongues. And, and like, and immediately they, they began declaring the gospel in all these different languages. So um, all these nations are gathered there, um, and they're there for the feast. And all of a sudden, they began hearing about Jesus and their native tongue as the curse, the language separation and division thing that took place at Babel got reversed. And immediately, everybody begins hearing the gospel, the testimony of the life of Jesus the Christ as Messiah. They heard it in their own language, and they said, whoa, 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 this is awesome. And yet there were others who doubted. How many of you know this? That in every single move of God, even in like this crazy revival dynamic, even in this one, there are those that say, yes, I was born for this. And then there's always going to be those who doubt. There will always be those who doubt. There will always be the mockers. And aren't you guys so glad that we live in Seattle like, in this place where everybody loves Jesus, everybody knows Jesus, like, everybody fears the Lord, like, Seattle, right? Like, how many of you, like, like you just know this is the place where, you, like, you just go to, you go to work with your, with your Jesus bench press, bench, bench press and a cross, and it's, like, cool, right? It's cool. No, right? Like, that's just not the way that, that's, yeah, that's, uh, like, how, how many of you know, like, like, there's many of you that you work in a certain amount of tension, when it comes to living out your, your Christianity within the culture, yeah? And what's so incredible is that a lot of us know what it's like to be mocked. A lot of us know what it's like to live in a culture of mockery. And here's the problem. Sometimes we participate with the very same spirit that's actually in the world. So there's a spirit of mockery in the world coming at the church. And what do we do as believers? Not us, of course. <laughs> but there are a lot of believers who begin mocking the world. So they step into the very same spirit. that It's like, you know, when you judge somebody for being judgmental, for judging you, and therefore they're judging you, and they're, they're trying to tell you that it says in the Bible that Jesus doesn't judge, and so they're judging you, and then you're judging them. And yeah, yeah. Anyone? How do you like, you can get on the Facebook right now and find a, a hundred different Christian memes that are mocking the world. Yeah. And here's what Peter does. Peter doesn't mock the mockers. With tremendous courage and tremendous love, with a tremendous heart, he responds to the mockers. And I believe that we here at Seattle Revival Center, that God is calling for us not to ignore the world, not to mock the world, not to judge the world, but to respond. Because what they're looking for is a response. And they're not looking for it from Pastor Darren. They're looking for it from you. Because your classmates, your, your, your co-workers, your family members, they're, they're looking at you. Like they're, they're watching you. Because they want to know if you actually possess the God that you profess. And we are coming into this place, I'm telling you, we are coming into this place of radical, tenacious courage and radical, tenacious humility where we say this might make me look really bad and this might be really awkward this might be really embarrassing but I'm going to step into the tension and I'm going to respond that was the very first sermon what's different here what's different here in this context is that Peter's not responding to the mockery he's actually responding to the glory you see in the very first sermon it was the awkwardness of Everybody thinking that they were just crazy. 
You guys are just crazy. You charismania, charismaniacs. You guys are just wacko. And he responded. But this sermon, he responds to the great glory because everybody's looking at him as if they're like the very messiahs themselves. Everybody knew the cripple. Like everybody knew him, right? It was like, yeah, that's the cripple. And now he's no longer a cripple. And they're looking at him like, whoa. So some of you, you're here today, and your world just is lame. You're just in a lot of lameness. Work is lame. Family's lame. Even your hobbies seem lame. Like, you're like, I used to enjoy painting. What is this? Like, how many of you, no, don't raise your hand. But like, some, like it's, some of us, we know what it's like to be in that place of lameness, in that place of tension, that place of awkwardness, and yet there's others here, and you're stepping into this level of glory. It's like, you know what it's like to go through the hard time, but now you're stepping onto this new platform of favor and acceleration. And, and, if, and, if, and if you're not experiencing that, I prophesy that over you. The season of lameness is coming to an end, and you're coming up. That the Lord has established a platform for you, and it might not be this platform, but it is a platform, and that the Lord is going to set you up, and guess what? For some of you, you're going to look pretty good. For some of you, it'll be at work, and you're going to look pretty good. For some of you, it'll be in your city, and you're going to look pretty good. And the response, figure it out now. Don't wait till People Magazine is calling, calling you up on the phone, looking for the interview. Like, think about it now. Um, how are you going to respond when everybody's looking at you saying, ooh. Let's just, let's just make some declarations, because everyone knows declarations are fun. This is going to be a church of Daniels. Cultural influencers, a church of pioneers, those on the front lines, those that are running with the things of God and implementing supernatural ideas into science, technology, art, education, local government, national government. Why not? You shall declare a thing. Let's just frame it up. What if Seattle could be a city of hope because of the church? What if the church was the solution to the homeless problem? And what if, what if you were that solution person, just this ordinary person, just doing Doing your deal, keeping it real, and God came and downloaded to you. To you. A buddy, a friend in this house, a divine encounter. The Lord just decides to come and feed to him a scroll. And when he eats it, all of a sudden, um, technology is revealed to him. He's already an engineer. He understands that kind of thing. But all of a sudden, he had a blueprint for that which could be. He writes his master's thesis on it. Starts going to the heads of state. He begins leading, uh, meeting with governmental leaders. Bloomberg Magazine comes. He does an article for Bloomberg Magazine. They say, where did you get this guy? This is just an ordinary engineer. People say, you can, you're not a minister. You're just an engineer. <laughs> you're not a minister. You're just a teacher. But all of a sudden, the Lord honors your desire. The Lord honors your desire. And now you're standing on a platform of glory. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to stand in the glory? How are you going to stand in the fame? How are you going to stand in the spotlight? Let's see how Peter addresses it. Are you, yeah, aren't, just, aren't you just having fun? Isn't this just fascinating? This is just so, I love, I just love this stuff. You know, and, and here's, this is the bipolar nature of the kingdom. One minute they're praising you, the next minute they're trying to kill you. Right? Like, isn't that so? So I love what T.D. Jake says. Don't let your lows be too low and don't let your highs be too high. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how Peter... <laughs> and, uh, all right, I, I like T.D. This is what he says here. Verse 12. Guys, 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 guys. Why are you looking at us? You think we did this? That's, that's what my Bible says. Is that what your Bible says? Look at that. He says, men of Israel, why are you wondering? Why are you staring at us? It's not, you think it's by our power, it's by our piety that we made this man walk? Verse 13, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, he, he, he is continuing. This is what he does. He redirects. Here's the thing. A lot of us, if we're honest, we think that it's our performance that dictates our value. So if we perform well, we're valuable. If we don't perform well, 
then we don't have value. And a lot of us, we feel this expectation to meet up to people's, you know, criteria. There's this cult cultural expectations and religious expectations. Um, we'll be talking about this week with the guys. A lot of men in the church feel like there's this set of expectations. There was a period of time within the church where it was like, oh, the church is just a bunch of women, and the men are not even men, and so men need to man up. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's for real. I went to an event called Man Up. So look here, you little dude. It's time to man up. You, do you have a gun? I didn't think so. Go buy a gun. Do you got a six-pack of, of abs? <laughs> not, not of corona? All right. Start doing some sit-ups. Do you like to fish? Do you like to hunt? Come on! Ah, uh, Man up! Right? There was this kind of this weird kind of masculine kind of thing in the church where like, like if you want to be a dude in the kingdom of God, then you got to dude up. Come on! Uh, and we had, all the, we had this weird masculine kind of... And, and, and there was this, a lot of stuff about the feminization of the church. And all now... I'm not going to lie, okay? <laughs> I like to fish. I like to hunt. And um, I like all that stuff. But that's not the goal for dudes in the church. And you, uh, oftentimes dudes uh, feel all this pressure. They, i got to be all this. I'm not measuring up for my wife. I'm not measuring up for my kids. And now I'm not measuring up for Pastor Darren. Bro. Bro, 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 bro. You don't have to be more of a dude. The goal is not to be more of a dude. The goal is to be more like Christ. Yeah. And for all you, for all you ladies, all you ladies, all you ladies. Uh. <laughs> the the pressure to have. To look like the girl on the, on the magazine rack, the pressure to have to look like, you know, Bonnie or Sandy, the pressure to have to look like a certain kind of thing, religious expectations, the pressure to have to look like Martha Stewart, I don't know, whatever, pre I'm not a woman, okay, I don't know, I don't, I'm sorry, I just don't know, let's talk about dude pressure, I get that, okay? For all the women of God, the goal is to look like Jesus. The goal is to look like Jesus, that Jesus was the pattern son, that Jesus is our pattern, that Jesus is our example. And so I want you just, whatever those things, you know, the truth is that performance does determine value, but it doesn't have to be your performance. It can be the performance of Christ Jesus, that you get to put on, put on his perfect performance, that he who did it right, he who nailed it, took on our report card took it on so that we could take on his perfection. Isn't there a tremendous amount of rest in that? So you, it's not that you need to do you well. It's just that you get to be you while falling in love with Jesus. And all of a sudden this thing isn't like being on a treadmill anymore. <laughs> I can't keep up. All of a sudden this thing is this beautiful love relationship with Jesus. If you're in a rough time right now, criticism, judgment, all that is coming at you, don't allow that to define you. What should you do with all these arrows, all this stuff, all this attack? Redirect it. Say, awesome, I'm, it's not going to define me. All this stuff. Yep, Jesus, it's yours. Are you in a place of fame and favor and fortune? Awesome, redirect it. Jesus, it all belongs to you. All this stuff, neither good nor bad, it's not going to define me. Jesus, you define me. Yeah? yeah. Don't let the pressure of positivity or negativity come upon you. Let your life be about Jesus. All right, number two. So we redirect number two. What does, Jesus, what does Peter say here? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. So this is what's so cool. He's like, you want to talk about me? Well, too bad because I want to talk about Jesus. Now, these guys don't know who Jesus is. These are Jews. So he begins talking to them like Jews. You guys need to know your audience. You know? 
How many, if you're not surrounded by any non-believers, non-Christians at all, it, it, it's time to figure that out. Yeah. You know, it's time to figure that out. Volunteer for something, dive into something. Not so that you can start telling everybody about Jesus, but dive in and start serving. God, what are you doing in my neighborhood? God, what are you doing in my, in, my, in my community? But find out who you're hanging with. Find out the language that they're speaking. And then reveal. Reveal Jesus. And do it in a way that they can get it. With, hopefully with as minimal amount of swearing as possible. You know, like, you said to talk like them. No, I didn't mean that. But, but Peter's talking to the Jews. So he starts talking to them in a way that a Jewish man would get it. So he says, the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You know him? They're like, of course we know God. Well, then he goes, then you need to know, is this God that ordained his servant, Jesus? And then what does he do? The whole sermon, he just begins revealing Jesus. And here's the thing, every time we get to hear, <laughs> every time we get to hear Peter preach, what does he preach about? Jesus. And every time we get to hear Paul preach, what is, who does Paul talk about? Jesus. And every single time we get to hear Darren preach, What's Darren talk about? Jesus. That it's all about revealing Jesus. That even as you engage with creation, creation reveals Jesus. You engage with science. Science reveals Jesus. It reveals the nature of the gospel. That in the beginning was perfection. And then there was the fall. There was that fracturedness. And now there needs to be the redemption and restoration of all things. What's that? It's the gospel. And every scientist, every philosopher... Every sociologist, every person knows, just turn on CNN tonight, and you won't see beauty and glory and purity and excellence. Turn on the news tonight, and you'll see fallenness. You'll see brokenness. You'll see disunity. There's this weird kind of like karmic woo-woo Seattle spirituality that says, everything is good, bro. You are the universe. The universe is you. If there's turmoil, the turmoil's inside of you. All right, bro. So how do I fix that? You just breathe, bro. Breathe. The problem with that is it's a lie. The problem with that is that all of creation is groaning and waiting for the revealing of the sons and daughters to be awakened, for you and I to be awakened to who we are, to, to what we've been created to be, for what we've been created to carry on the earth, that we've been created to government, to, to carry the government of his peace, of his shalom, not the government of discord and disunity and blame and all this and, you know, yeah. To reveal... To reveal Jesus. You know what the Bible's about? Jesus. Cut the Bible, it'll bleed the gospel. Some people think Jonah and the whale, it, it, it's this and it's that. And Jonah and the whale, it's pointing to the true and perfect Jesus. Jesus, the true and perfect Jonah, who would be swallowed up, not by a fish, but by a tomb. Who would overcome sickness, death, hell, the grave. Job, yeah, Job. Oftentimes, I get to hear about Job from people. Don't you know that Job is a pattern for us as Christians so that we will live lives of suffering? Yay! A lot of people are not Christians. They're not followers of Christ. They're followers of Job. I go somewhere, start talking about healing and signs and wonders, and then someone has to pull out Job. Okay. Do you know that Job is pointing to Jesus? Jesus who would be the true and perfect Job, the true and perfect innocent sufferer yeah. who wouldn't remain in a place of suffering but would overcome all suffering on behalf of us so that we wouldn't have to live lives of shame and torment, of physical suffering and all these things, but that we could step into a place of healing, resurrection, life. Jesus said, I've come that you would have belief, philosophy, no, no, no. Jesus said, baby, I come that you would be alive. That you'd function. That you'd be a part of the functioning, breathing, fiery bride of Christ. Reveal. That's why God is... I like what Bobby Connor said. Like, Bobby Connor said, like, 
you know, if, if it wasn't about revealing Jesus, this whole thing would be set up like to where you receive Jesus. There'd be an evangelist, and then there'd be a sniper. You'd pray the prayer. Dear Jesus, I give you all my sins, my guilt, my shame. I confess you as my Savior. And all of a sudden, phew, phew, phew. and you'd be dead. Why did he leave you here? So that you'd receive Jesus. You'd bring him in. There'd be that connection with the Father. The Holy Spirit would come into you, begin burning in you. And then the reality of the kingdom would start to be revealed, demonstrated, walked out on the earth. As Jesus prayed, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. That's, that, that's not Darren's job. I'll get, my, I'll get my little bitty role. This is our job. This is your job. You're a fiery one. You're burning all this character, all this stuff. You're like, I walk, but Darren, I walk with a limp. Got all this stuff. I've, Darren, I've been divorced eight times. <laughs> and I'm thinking about getting divorced. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. You heard the testimony. Darren, I, God can't use me. I backslid back in 92. Darren, God can't use me. I stutter. Darren, God can't use me. I've been fired from my job too many times. Darren, God can't use me. I got issues. Join the club. Just some of us know how to hide our issues better than others. Yeah. I walk with a limp. Exactly. That's why you can be trusted. That's why you're far more broken, far more humble, far more teachable, far more honest. And if you're available, God in His grace will pick you up. Look at this. Verse 19. Peter says this. If you want to be a part of what God's doing on the face of the earth right now, repent. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins would be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. A lot of people think that repentance means we tear our clothes, we cry, we scream, I'm sorry! You know, that's just not the case. This word repent actually means to turn, to turn away from. And this is what it says here. Hey, turn away from all that stuff. Turn away from all that stuff that you've been engaging with. Turn, turn away from all those false messiahs. Turn away from all that good stuff that you've been trying to earn your performance. Turn away from all that bad stuff where you've just been like, fooey on it. I can't measure up to my wife. I can't measure up to my pastor. I can't measure. So fooey. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Just be done with being done and repent. Turn away from that lifestyle. Turn away from the pot. Turn away from the affair. Turn away, turn away, turn away, and turn into Jesus. He says, repent, and you'll find rest. And how many of you here, like, if you're honest, you're like, dude, Darren, I just, bro, I just need rest. Religion, too much work. Rebellion, too much work. It's just everything taxes me. I want relationship. If that's you, it just begins with getting real honest with Jesus. Real honest, and just having that conversation, Jesus. I'm going to turn away from all my good stuff, all my performance stuff. I'm going to turn away from all my bad stuff. I'm going to get real. I'm going to get honest. I will be seen. I will be heard. I will be known. I will be changed. I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm going to come up. And by His grace, by His mercy, I'll be loved. I'll be loved. You'll be loved. We just declare, you know, you're, some of you, you're not going to believe it. That's okay. I just want you to say it. I promise you, you're not lying. You're just prophetically framing something over your life. But just declare this. I am loved here. Just speak that over your life. I am loved here. Yeah, it's not about the, per the future version of you. It's you right where you're at right now. You and all your stuff, with all your baggage, with all that. Guess what? You're loved. You're loved. You're loved. And I promise you this. If you'll repent, enter into his rest. 
he will do the heavy lifting that you've been trying to do. And he'll accomplish more in the next 30 days than you've been trying to do in the last 30 years. He's, he's so God. Like he's such a, he's such a God. He's, he's God. He's so capable. Don't you just want God in your life just deconstructing and reconstructing? We just have to be willing to put, put the hammer down. <laughs> put the tool belt down. And just to give our lives, just to surrender, say, God. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's the invitation. Repent and enter his rest. Enter his rest. There's no condemnation. There's no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Would the deacons come? We're going to celebrate communion together as a family. As they're coming, this is what I want to do. Keep your eyes open um, and don't bow your head. The reason why is if you, if you close your eyes... But, they're going to spill grape juice all over you. So um, keep, keep your eyes open with, with, with no one looking around. Um, look right at me. And, and if, if, you're, if you just be honest and say, Darren, that's me. Um, like, I need, I, need, I need Jesus today. Like, I've tried a lot of other stuff. I've tried church. I've tried pastors. I've tried um, cults. I've tried meditation. I've tried all this, all this stuff. But Darren, like, that, that's me. Um, I want to repent and enter into this rest. I want to enter into a new relationship with Jesus. Then for, I want you to know, quickly, courageously, hold up your hand for five seconds so I can see it. And, yeah, awesome. God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. God bless you. So, yeah, God bless you. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say, Pastor Darren, I need to repent. I've been engaging with all kinds of stuff and it hasn't been Jesus, but today I want to start with Jesus. Hold, just shoot that hand up. Just shoot it up. Awesome. I saw you, bro. Thanks for shooting it up again. Awesome. Anyone else? Because we're, we're going to repent. We're going to enter into his rest and we're going to leave this place changed. Is that good? Yeah. Let's just pray. Just come before Jesus right now. Let's just have a conversation. Just see him coming to you. Say hi to him. Hi, Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need you. I've been trying, trying, trying. I've been doing, doing, doing. I've been trying to get this thing right. I've been trying to do it the right way. I've been trying to measure up. Today I'm going to take off all my self-righteousness. I need you. I need your perfect performance to be mine. Just have a conversation, whatever it is. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I need you to be my savior, my lover, my comforter, my friend. How about disappointment? You had a life plan. You thought you'd be somewhere by now. And where you're at is not where you wanted to be. You had a career plan. You had a management strategy. You had a business plan. And it's just, you're just like, there's just this place of frustration. If that's you, just give that to Jesus. Just give him all your plans. Give him your life plans. Give him everything. And let him release to you his plan for your life. His call for your life. And I can tell you, his plan may incorporate some of your plans. But until you're willing to lay it all down. Until we're willing to surrender it all. We can't begin collaborating and partnering until we make him the Lord of our lives. Jesus, I make you, you are no longer going to be just my Savior. I'm going to trust you as my Lord. To exercise your fatherly lordship and kingship within my life. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Some of you, you you're, you're like, man, 
I thought I would be married by now. What's wrong with me? I've been trying so hard. And I keep getting rejected over and over and over again. Just give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. I trust you. I trust you with my life. I know you've prepared someone for me. I know you've wired them for me. I trust you. I give to you all my expectations in this area. I give to you my anger in this area. I give to you my self-rejection in this area. I give to you my rejection of others in this area. I give to you this whole thing. I put this whole thing on the altar. I just say, Jesus, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Let's stand. We're going to partake of communion together this morning. We're going to remember the incredible sacrifice that was done because of love for us. This is what, this is what it says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as we partake of the bread together, let's not just take this from a place of tradition, but let's engage with this communion from a place of faith. That even as you eat this, just uh, uh, imagine his body that was given for you. Imagine him hanging from the cross because of his great love and begin to engage with that love. Begin to engage with that place of radical sonship. As you begin to uh, uh, eat of his body this morning, just see his body going inside of you, beginning to blow up and explode inside of you, beginning to regenerate you, beginning to pull you into that person that he has created you to be. He said, as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Meaning this, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget what I have done for you because I love you. Let's partake of the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, too. We love you, too. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Jesus, thank you for your blood. Father Jesus, we thank you for this life transforming, this body renewing, this DNA cleansing, this generational curse breaking blood. We thank you that the blood of Jesus, it speaks on our behalf. We thank you that this blood, it speaks even for our children and our children's children. We thank you, Father, that we are not defined by the mistakes of our fathers or forefathers or generationally. We are defined by the precious love of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that, that it speaks. We receive your blood. We engage with your blood. We thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus, even bringing healing to our mortal bodies and cleansing us of even generational infirmity that would love to define us. We speak in this place every disease to bow to the name of Jesus, to bow to the authority of King Jesus. Everything generational genetic, it must bow to the authority, to the King Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your healing power that's in this room. Right now, we drink in remembrance of the Son. We drink in remembrance of the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, Jesus the Christ. Let's proclaim this new covenant as we drink together. And everybody said, Amen. Look at the person next to you. It's finished. You are free. You are free indeed. Look at the other person there said, you, you're a new creation. You're a new thing. 
The old is gone. The new has begun. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Bonnie Shop. It's going to be a lot of fun. God bless you. Love you guys.